to drive and guide, we are just about to go. It's just a few points on safety firstly. Now if you can, please remain seated at all times between stops. And also keep your head and arms inside the vehicle when you're moving, if you do pass quite close to trees and shrubs. And just in case there is an emergency, there are push buttons up the top in each of the carriages. Now the tour takes about 35, 40 minutes. There's seven stops on route and your ticket does last all day. So you can go around as many times as you like or just keep hopping on and off. Thank you, Michael. Now we are running two vehicles, so it's a half hourly service. And there is a timetable at each of the stops. To start with then on the left, that's the Victoria Plaza. It's a very nice cafe there. There's a gift shop and a garden centre around the back. This is the nearest gate to the Kew Garden Railway Station. Now we are on an alternative route to usual at the moment. This is because of the uh, Kew the Music Festival starting next week. In the process today of uh, putting up all the lighting and stages. Just over on the left, a small white building, that's the Temple of Bologna. Now, Bologna was the Roman goddess of war, companion to Mars. It's one of many follies here in the gardens, and it's one of 40 listed buildings. It was built by Sir William Chambers in 1760 for Princess Augusta. was Princess Augusta, the Dowager Princess of Wales, who in 1759 first set aside nine acres of land as a botanical garden, with the help of her friend and landscape advisor, the Earl of Butte. And when she died in 1772, her son George III inherited her estate and combined it with the nearby Richmond estate of his grandfather to form the gardens, very much as you see them today. Now the Royal Botanic Gardens here at Kew covers an area of just over 300 acres. And today the gardens are recognised as a global centre of excellence in the study of plant diversity and economic botany. Kew is a leading force in education, conservation and scientific research. And in July 2003 was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now we're just crossing over the Pagoda Vista, that does go from the Pagoda on the left up to the Palm House on the right. And this is one of three laid down in the 1840s, whose views are now protected by law. is the Mediterranean Garden and on top of that you'll see King William's Temple. This was designed by Sir Geoffrey Whiteville and built in 1837. And inside there you'll find plaques commemorating British battles from Minden in 1760 right up to Waterloo in 1850.
this large sweet chest I've just come up on the left here is one of the oldest trees in the gardens. This is one of Kew's very old sweet chestnuts. That was used as a mould for the Wompy Willow tree in the Harry Potter films. And on the left there, the Mediterranean garden, or the extension to it. Now in there we've got stone pines, cork trees, and um, there's even a small olive grove. Now the road on the left takes you down to the Temperate House and Treetop Walkway. And right down the far end is the Pagoda and Japanese Landscape and Gateway. Now the Temperate House was built between 1860 and 1899. But only took that length of time because they ran out of money. And there was a 30 year period when there was no building work going on at all. Uh, if there's no room, I can squeeze something up the front cabbage here. Okay. straight road on the left follows the original dividing line between the Kew and Richmond estates. It was known as Love Lane. It's now known as Holly Walk. And as well as uh, Europe's largest collection of mature holly trees, you'll find the treetop walkway. But that walkway is 18 metres above the ground. And it meanders for 200 metres through the tops of the trees. That's all very educational, very impressive. Mm. And as we drive through the gardens, you notice every tree has got a nameplate on it. Mm. Most of those are black or silver, but there are also over 300 blue ones. And that means it's a champion tree, the largest of its kind in the British Isles. Now you'll also see quite a few with purple labels. Now these labels incorporate a QR code. And if you've got an iPhone or a, an Android, you can download a free barcode, barcode scanning app. And you can scan those QR codes and we'll tell you all about that tree. Just on the right, you see quite a few young monkey puzzle trees. Now, in 1795, a plant collector called Archibald Mingus was out in Chile. Now, he's had a meal with the governors of the country. And they were served up the seeds of the monkey puzzle tree as dessert. Now, instead of eating those seeds, he actually saved them, planted them in troughs on board ship, coming back to England. And that's how they originated in this country. On the right, the largest lake in the gardens, and that's man-made, created when they wanted building material for the mound that a temporary house stands on. In 2006, they opened a bridge across it, and that's the award-winning sack lacrosse it. That's all made of granite and bronze, and we'll be stopping right beside it. And the road uh, just on the left-hand side, this little path takes you up to another entrance to the treetop walkway. Come on, guys, we're going to walk around the other side. I can get down. 
Uh, if you can't all squeeze in, I can get two people at the front here. side takes you up to the compost heap. Now you may wonder why we mentioned that, but we are quite proud of it. This is the largest one in the country, and it shows our commitment to recycling and conservation. Now every week on average, 200 cubic metres of waste from the gardens goes in there, along with 50 cubic metres of horse manure, supplied by the horses of the Royal Horse Artillery. Which way would want to, but there is a viewing platform. You want to go and have a look. It does actually save us £500,000 a year by not having to buy in compost and not having to send out waste to landfill sites. up to stop number four. Now some of you see it as we drive past uh, others as we start off again but on the left is the pagoda. <laughs> now you see that through an avenue of cedar trees. This is the Cedar Vista. That's one of three vistas laid down in the 1840s whose views are now protected by law. <coughs> now the pagoda itself was built by Sir William Chambers, supposedly as a surprise to Princess Augusta. But it did take two years to build. And she was living in the gardens at the time. She can't have been that surprised. It's 50 metres high, has 10 storeys. And when it was finished in 1762, it was the most accurate imitation of a Chinese building anywhere in Europe. On the right here, these Egyptian geese, this is actually mum and dad with two now very large chicks. Come on then. The mum's one with one foot, so always try and feed her. Conservation areas over to your left. Around the back of that, you'll find Queen Charlotte's cottage. Now, this is a charming 18th century thatched cottage. And it was given to Charlotte by George III as a wedding present in 1761. But she used it solely as a picnic area for herself and her 15 children. Now, the cottage and grounds are given to queue by Queen Victoria on the understanding that the grounds are left in their natural, uncultivated condition. Now the gardens are built on the floodplain of the River Thames. Very poor quality sandy soil, not very good for trees at all. So the gardeners here have done a wonderful job really. It also would have been very flat 
It's when you mound you see your dips in the ground. That's all down to our landscape gardeners over the last 253 years. Now I have got the River Thames straight in front of us and we're going along beside it for a short while. I believe the tide's been going out most of the morning so it may not be looking its best. When we come through the trees though, if you look left across the river you'll see Zion House, the London residence of the Duke of Northumberland. And before the house was there, there was a very rich and powerful medieval abbey, founded by Henry V in 1415, and dissolved by Henry VIII in 1539. But if you look at the top centre of the building, very large plinth with the lion on top, but the story is that 260 years ago, that lion stood in the grounds of the Duke's London house with its tail in the air, and its... Um, bottom pointed towards Clarence House where the Prince of Wales lived. Apparently they had a rail. And on the right the Zion Vista, the longest of the three protected ones. And just as a matter of interest across the Thames there there's been two battles at Brentford. There was one in 1016 with Canute and Edmund Ironside and one in 1642 with the Roundheads and Cavaliers during the Civil War. But before all that, in 54 BC, Julius Caesar and the Roman legions are set across the Thames along here. Notice both sides here, all the long grass and the weeds. And this is now garden has been lazy, of course. This is all part of our conservation policy. We like to leave certain areas to naturalise. It's all done to encourage more wildlife into the gardens. Probably also I think it looks quite nice. But this is stop number five, best one for Rhododendron Dell, the Bamboo Gardens and the Minka House. So the road on the right does go down through Rhododendron Dell. And that's the sole surviving evidence in the gardens of work by Lancelot, Capability Brown, the famous 18th century landscape gardener. Also down there are the bamboo gardens, where we have 120 different varieties of bamboo. And just on the right hand side you'll start getting glimpses of the Minka house. Now this is a traditional Japanese farmhouse, and that one is authentic. 
It's over 100 years old. And it was shipped over from Japan to Q in 2001, all in bits and pieces, and then rebuilt on that site for an exhibition. It's now a permanent feature of the gardens. Now these large trees in the gardens give out enough oxygen every day to keep about five people alive. All life does depend on plants. They do provide the air we breathe. They give us food, fuel, shelter and medicines. The human population has trebled in the last 60 years and there's now 7 billion of us. So we do need to support conservation and the sustainable use of plant resources. October 1987, we had the great storm in the southeast, a hurricane. The local papers called it the storm of the century, and it was the worst storm for 300 years. A queue had over a thousand trees blown down or damaged. 10% of all the trees in the gardens at that time. We do have a policy of every year planting somewhere between 100 and 200 new trees. And there are now 14,000 here in the collection. That represents more than 2,000 different species. If you go to the Victoria Plaza between the cafe and the gift shop, there's a really good wall mural. It depicts the events of the night of the great storm, and it's carved from the wood from the trees that were blown down. I'm just starting down here to feed it. I've got a guinea fowl here on the right. He's a good boy. This road on the left takes you down to the Brentford Gate and Car Park. A very nice riverside walk. And that brings us up to stop number six. So we've got the Brentford Gates, also climbers and creepers for the kids. And uh, White Peaks, where there's another cafe and a gift shop. Yes, okay. 
choked myself. You did. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But this tree on the left-hand side is a Spanish sweet chestnut, one of the oldest trees in the gardens. Now the proper name for that tree is Castanea. And it's a good from those trees that's used to make castanets, used by flamenco dancers. That's where the name comes from. From the Castanea you get castanets. Okay, I'll do that. Just because Just on the left hand side, got a nice area of eucalyptus trees. As the leaves of those trees, of course, that the koalas feed on. But those leaves are mildly narcotic, which may explain why koalas sleep for 20 hours a day. But the leaves are also um, very rich in oil. And that oil is uh, highly flammable. And in the red hot days in Australia, you get a blue haze over the trees from that oil. They can't help very much when they have forest fires. I probably should have mentioned earlier about the David Nash exhibition. This is a major exhibition on until September. You see lots of signs saw it driving round. David Nash is a sculptor in wood, straight out of the tree trunks normally. They see a sign on the right there for the wood quarry. Now occasionally David Nash is actually on the site here, carving out brand new sculptures from tree trunks that Q have supplied. He tends to use a chainsaw and a, uh, an axe, so no one is there normally because you can hear him. But if you look at the map he got when he came in, that shows you the size of most of the big sculptures that he does. There's also a few in the uh, glass houses as well. I can't remember now, but I mentioned cue the music, and I did at the start, told you it's why we want to divert. But next week, we've got a series of concerts, starting on Tuesday, right through to the weekend. I think there's only one that hasn't sold out yet, which is M People and uh, Chic. Tickets available for that uh, from the gates. Now, Chic had a massive hit in 1978 with... Uh, the Freak, which unfortunately I do remember. On the left now in Kew Palace. That's the oldest building in the gardens. Built in 1631 by a rich London merchant of Dutch descent. Hence its Flemish design. Now Charlotte and George III used it as their summer residence from 1802 until illness forced the king to move to Windsor Castle. However, Charlotte continued to stay there occasionally, and did in fact die there in 1818. And the palace